before the beginning, there was him. All things gigantic, volcanic, and romantic were first found in him. The very fabric of time was knitted by him. Future, present, past, guess where you'll find him. He is El Olam, was God, is God, forever God. While hearts are asleep, he intercedes, singing our praises in our wildest dreams, colors our darkest moments in Technicolor and HD, and when no one can see our pain, he sees. His breath gave birth to a symphonic universe, orchestral ecosystems on a planet that's biodiverse. Blowholes exhaling, eagles dovetailing, bacteria, blue whales, and icebergs set sailing. Every wing beat, every molecule, every growing follicle, every stampede of hooves, every bird song so audible. An unyielding fiery supernova called love. In his name prayers are whispered, uttered and groaned. His name fulfills longings and men's broken bones. Mountains and mammals shriek his glory with elation. He is Elohim, the God who baked creation. Good morning, we are so excited that you've decided to join us here at Latitude Church's At Home Experience for Easter 2020, and Easter like we never have experienced before. But we are believing that God has got a word for you no matter where you're at today. We are so thrilled that you are tuning in to us. Yes, and we aren't just excited about this Sunday, Christina, we're excited about next Sunday as well. Normally we have Celebration Sunday, which is our Believer's Baptism service, but since we can't meet, we're doing something very special. We're having an interactive service called Somebody Textify. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be great, and if you wanna interact with us, make sure you tune in to the 9 a.m. service. It's going to be amazing. Absolutely, and you know what? Lean in right now, no matter where you are, maybe you're in your car, maybe in your house, or maybe you're at your job, we are believing that God's got a word for you. So will you please lean in with us right now as we go to the worship and go to the word this morning.
gonna let you go I'm never gonna let you go I'm never gonna let you go I never had We go way, way back We go way, way back You and I Got history We go way, way back We go way, way back I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise Treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Oh, there's nothing Better than you There's nothing Better than you Lord, there's nothing Nothing is better than you God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again.
stillness I know that you are God in the secret of your presence I know
Good morning, Latitude Church. This morning, I just wanna encourage us around our opportunity time and this opportunity that we have to give generously in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna read a scripture this morning from Matthew and it says, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I wanna encourage us this morning that what we're doing right now, this opportunity to give, this opportunity to extend our finances towards the hand of Jesus, towards what God wants to do on this planet to make things like today possible, we don't need recognition for that. And that's not what God's after. What we're after is for Jesus to be famous, not us to be famous. And so this morning, as you're preparing your tithes and offerings, as you're preparing to give, I just wanna encourage us this morning, let's Let's do that from a secret place. Let's do that knowing that God is gonna bless it and that God is gonna get the glory for that and we don't need that glory in Jesus' name. Hey, let me pray for you and then I'm gonna just explain real briefly the ways to give this morning. Jesus, we love you and we honor you. We honor you with our whole lives. We honor you with every aspect of our lives and that does include our finances. And so God, this morning I ask that you would bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, church, there are three very, very simple ways to give at Latitude, and we've made that as easy as possible. The first way is to just go to our website, latitude.church, and click on the giving tab and then follow the instructions. And then the second one is great. It's something that we've seen a lot of fruit from, and that is that you can text 84321. You just say the word give and then an amount and you send that to 84321. And then of course, the third way for any of you who just love to physically bring that gift by, that's been amazing as well. We get to have great conversations. And so you can just bring that by the church Monday through Thursday between nine and three. And we're excited to receive it that way. But hey, today is Resurrection Sunday. Today is a day that we stand knowing that our God is alive and that every thing that he promised is going to happen and is happening today. I'm so excited to hear the preaching of the word. So hey, would you help me and welcome and let's just stand and honor and clap for our senior pastor, Jason Smith. We want to welcome every one of you today. Latitude Church, everybody watching all over the globe, for real, for real, on this Easter Sunday. Today's a little bit different because normally uh, I would be inside of a building. We would be having Easter services inside of a church building uh, or waking up early for a sunrise by the water freezing to death. But today... Man, I just want to say thank you for opening up your space to allow God to come in to your home, to your living room, your den, wherever it's at on this Easter. You know, I'm, I'm just encouraged because I think that this is the first Easter probably ever that we've had Easter services inside of homes. And man, I'm just super stoked about it. And I just want to take a moment and say thank you. Uh, for those of you who are still able to work and you're still able to give, uh, because man, because of your giving, we can keep doing things like this and putting out quality uh, messages and worship uh, to have church wherever people are. So thank you uh, for giving sacrificially during this time. Um, so, and I'm just encouraged. I'm excited. You know what? Why don't we just take a moment before we get into the Word of God, and why don't you just say thank you, Jesus? Make some noise in your space. Welcome him right there in your house. Today is Resurrection Sunday. It's the Super Bowl for the saints, and I'm glad that you have tuned in. If you have your copy of God's Word, the Bible, your U version, whatever it is, would you turn to the, the book of Matthew chapter 28? I'll give you a second to turn there. I want you to just yell at me as soon as you get there so I can hear it. All right, thumbs up or do something I need you to engage today uh, in this message with me. Though I, I can't see you so much in person, I can see your engagement. So amen, praise hands, high five, fist bump, whatever it is, send it to us today. We want to engage with you right here online. Matthew 28, starting in verse 1. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. It says, Now after the Sabbath... 
toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I I want to read it in the Jason paraphrase. It says this, and the angel said to the women, girls, what you scared of? Don't you be scared. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen as he has said. Come see the place where he was. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word is living. Your word is active. God, your word is powerful. We thank you that we are not preaching a dead Jesus. We're preaching an alive Jesus, an alive Savior, the one who said it and the one who did it. God, we thank you today that the tomb is empty. God, we have a resurrected life and we serve a resurrected Savior. And God, I thank you today that you're going to teach us and God, you're going to show us and you're going to encourage us as we celebrate you. Jesus, this resurrected King, King Jesus. We pray it in your powerful name, Lord. Amen and amen. I just want to talk today about the history you and I have had with God. All the way up to this point, the history that you and I have had with God, even before We knew our beginning with him. I need you to lean in today. Even before time began, even before our physical birthday, our first breath, and even our first Easter. I've been sent this Easter in 2020 inside of your space, your living room, what we used to call our den, your garage, your man cave, your workplace, or your motorized vehicle to tell you today that we've got history with God. I want you to nudge your neighbor six feet from you and tell them we've got history. Come on. We've got history with God. Man, I'm excited today because what does that mean? What does it mean to say that we've got history? It means that we have some sort of past. To say we've got history means that we've got some sort of past. In other words, there there is some sort of relationship. There's some sort of knowledge. There's some sort of past that we have with God. Lean in right here real closely. That could be distant. That could be distant, but we still have a relationship. That, that could be disconnected, but we still have one. That could be complicated, but we still have one. Could be a little bit dysfunctional, but we still have one. In other words, we might not have spoken in years. You might not have received a postcard from that person in decades, or you might not have slid up on somebody's story or swipe right to say hello, but we have some sort of past. There's some sort of story that that could be told between us, and that's what it means to have history. It's like this. Any designer that's ever designed has a history with what they've created. Uh, Any artist has a history with what they've drawn or what they've painted. Any photographer has a history of, of the pictures that they've taken, no matter how long ago that it has been. Any musician like myself, uh, just kidding, has a history of what they've written, a song that they might have sung, or an instrument that they might have played. You know, for instance, in 1997, you go way back, um, I've got a history with my groomsmen at my wedding. You know, I, I know their faces. I know what they look like. Some of them's probably great a little bit like me by now, uh, but I know what they look like. I, I, know, I know what they wore on that day because I'm the one that picked out their tux. Um, I, I know several things about them, though for some of them, I haven't talked to them or seen them in a long time. You know why? Because we've got history. I, I've got a history with them. You know, we have history with teachers. 
I remember my kindergarten teacher. I loved her. Miss Griffin was her name. She babied me, and I absolutely loved it. She would let me call my Mima to come pick me up because I just didn't feel good. I didn't feel good because I didn't have one of Mima's biscuits. You follow me? Come on, somebody. I've got, we've got history with coaches. You know, some great coaches, some not so great coaches. Uh, we've got history with bosses and supervisors and peers. Uh, you know, you, when you go to your um, graduation class reunion, you might say, oh, I didn't know they graduated with me. Well, they're in the yearbook, so there's some sort of history you have with that person. We've got history with places that we used to work at. Places, I think they're called restaurants. I'm not real sure it's been so long since we've been to one that we sat down and we, we got to know that, that waiter or that waitress, and we really miss them now for sure. I've driven by places that, that I've used to work at, and I tell my boys, boy, your daddy used to work there. And they're like, and? I'm like, I'm just telling you because I've got a history there. Fields where I used to play baseball on. We've got history there. Man, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus today, and listen, every day for the believer, I, I've been sent to remind you, to remind somebody that has forgotten that you and God have history. In other words, you go way back. I want you to tell somebody right now, I go way back with God. I have forgotten, but I go way back with God I, because I've got some sort of past with him today. Listen, that might mean that somebody watching right now has felt disconnected from your relationship with God for many years, for many reasons. I don't know what your reason is, but I want to encourage you today that that history that God started with you a long, long, a way back ago is real fresh and it's real relevant. So I need you to lean in and hear what God has to say to you right now. You say, e even though it might be distant, or confusing, a little strange. Uh, you might not have talked in a while to God or, or read his writings in a while uh, or mentioned his name in a good way, but, but you need to know that you have history with God. You've got some sort of past with the God of this creation, the God of this universe. You've got some sort of history with him today. And since we do that, we tend to come back. Somebody say, come back. So we tend to come back to some things that we have a history. I'm reminded in this story uh, where, where, where the women got up early that morning and went to the tomb. First, what I'm reminded about what we're coming back, what, if you remember the story, it says that the angel came down. The angel came back. What does that mean? The angel had history with Jesus in heaven. If you keep reading the gospel of John, it tells us that Jesus left the glories and the splendors with heaven. And in John chapter 17, he prayed to the father and said, I can't wait to be reunited. Not those words, but kind of, I can't wait to be reunited with what we had at one point. We had that history with everything was great. Everything was with the father. He was in heaven with him. And, and now the angel came down. He came down to Jesus because he had had history with him. I'm also reminded about the women. The women went back to the tomb. Why? Yeah, they went to go anoint the body and, and to do all those things they did back then with the burial. But I'm believing that they went back because they had a history with Jesus. Not so many people, the crowds didn't go back because a lot of the crowds didn't have a history with him. But they had a history, so they came back. They came back to the tomb. You see, it might take some time, uh, but you'll come back. It might mean that we've got to swallow our pride a little bit, or we, we can't burn any bridges. We, we've got to leave something on good terms, but we will be back. You will come back to what you have a history. Let me give you an example. Have you ever left a job before, but now you have found yourself working back there again? Uh, I don't know. I have before. Uh, I, I've left a job because I just hated it for whatever reason, but I didn't burn any bridges and, and I left on great terms because my daddy always taught me, he said, you know, son, don't leave on bad terms. You never know what you might have to go back to. Uh, and some of us have left jobs. And the reason we didn't get a new job because now we've got to learn a new skill. We've got to learn new trade. We've got to learn all this all over again. And it really wasn't worth it. And sometimes you didn't go back because the boss was just fantastic or the pay was really up there. You went back because you had a history with that place. 
You went back because you had a history with that place. I love what Mark 9, verse 31 said. It says, Jesus said to them, the son of man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later today, but three days later, he will rise from the dead. This is how it literally could be translated. But three days later, he will come back. Three days later, he will come back. And I was so encouraged with this message because it tells me because we and God have a history that he's going to come back for us. He's not going to leave us abandoned. Since we all, all have some sort of history with God, Jesus tells us, though I will be killed, I'm going to be buried. And the famous theologian Arnold Schwarzenegger, he says, I will be back. I'll be back. I'm going to come back. I will rise from the dead. I will come back to you. He always comes back to those he has a history with. So you need to know that you're not abandoned. You have not been forsaken. God is there right now in your space. I don't know if you can feel him, but I can feel him as I preach right now. He's with me because I've got history, and that's his promise. He says, I've got a past with you, and I'm going to come back. He is our creator. So it makes sense that he will come back to his creation. John 14 verse 8 says, I will not leave you as orphans. Jesus said, I will come to you. Jesus tells the disciples and he's telling us today that we don't have to worry about no one not caring for us. We, we don't have to worry about no one not loving us. We don't have to worry about no one losing interest and, and not having our best interest at heart. Jesus said, I am living. I am breathing. I am sitting at the right hand of the Father. I have come back. I didn't stay in the grave. You can worship and you can serve a God that is real, a God that is alive. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I am your father. He said, I'm going to come back. When, when you have history with God, God, this is what God's promises tell us. It says, I have always known you. When we've got history with God that goes way, way back, it tells us, I am have always known you. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, God says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Did you catch that? God says, I knew you because I formed you. If I'm the one that made you, if I'm the one that created you, you can rest assured that I know you. I know everything about you. I know the, the good, the bad, the ugly, the warts. I know all of that. I know how you don't like the hair that's growing in right now. But I knew you. I'm the one that has formed you. I love how the psalmist put it in Psalm 139. He says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Why? Because God has always known us. God has always known you. And because he's always known you, he says, I, I can come back because I have a part with you. I, I've, got, I've got a past. I've got some meaning with you. Isaiah 44 verse 2 says, this is what the Lord who made you, who put you together says. That the one who made you and the one who formed you, the one who put you together, this is the, the God of all creation, the God of the universe. He's the one that says this to you. I'm the one that's made you. I'm the one that has put you together. He says, I've always known you. Even when you haven't known me or not wanted to know me, I've known you. I've known you. And, and because I've always known you, God's promise also says, I have always loved you. Isn't that refreshing today? Because God says, I have known you. That means I've always loved you. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. The Lord came to us. He come back to us. The Lord came to us from far away. And this is what he says. I have loved you with a love that lasts forever. Another translation says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That love has no beginning and it has no end. It has no start. It has no finish. In other words, God says, I've loved you always. 
I've always loved you because I've always known you. I love what Malachi chapter 1 verse 2 says. I have always loved you, says the Lord, period. I have always loved you. No matter how far away from a history we've had with someone, there is something in our history that says, no matter what, I still have some love for you. No matter what's happening, I still love you. And I believe that God says that no matter what you do, I love you. No matter what you've done, I love you. No matter, no matter what you, it will take place from, from this place forward, you can count that my love is everlasting because his promise says, I've always known you and I always love you. God has and God will always love you. And he'll always love me. And because God says, I've always known you, and because I always loved you, he says this, I've always wanted you. Have you ever felt unwanted? Have you ever felt unaccepted? You see, here's the great news about having history with God. He says, I've always wanted you. In Romans chapter 5, the apostle Paul, man, just puts this absolutely one of the best ways, I think. And he says this in verse 5, and this hope that God's always wanted you. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. In other words, since God's always wanted you, he's, he's pursuing after you. He's always loved you. He's pursuing after you. He, he's, always, he's always known you, so he's constantly pursuing after us. And Paul says, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love Verse 6 says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came. He came down to us. He came back for us at just the right time, and he died for us sinners. There's a translation that says, for while we were yet sinning, Christ died for us. Why? Because he's always wanted you. He's always wanted you. And because I've always known you and and loved you and because I've always wanted you, this is what Jesus said. I've come back. And then he says, I raised to life for you. That's why he said in John chapter 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, shall never die. In other words, we might fall asleep, the Bible says, physically, but we will wake up spiritually in heaven one day with Jesus because he wants us so much. He said, I'm not going to just go die on the cross and be buried and stay there. I'm going to give you some hope that you can hang your hat on, that you can take to the bank and cash. I've always wanted you. This is why I was raised to life for you. I don't know where you are, but you need to give God a praise offering right now because he raised to life for you. Matthew 28, 6 says, the angel was talking to the women and said, he's not here. He's not here for he is risen just like he said. He said, come, I want to show you the place where he was. I want to show you where he was. God says, my history, watch this, our history, this is where it it was started. Way before you made your appearance on this earth, way before your conception ever happened, before your mom and daddy hooked up, before, before you were a twinkle in your daddy's eye, he said, he said, our history started way before then, way, way before they, your mom and daddy ever met, way, way before that chemistry happened, way before that happened. He says, way before your parents picked out your name, the color of your nursery, or before you cried your very first tear. God says, our history is rich. Our history is deep. Our history is like none other. And this is what the Lord showed me in John chapter 17 Verse 20, he said this, Jesus was praying for you and for me before he was crucified. I don't believe it. Look it up. John 17, verse 20, Jesus began praying. And this is what he said. I pray for those who will believe in me. That's you and me. And I started thinking about that and thought, God, you've had a history with us way before Way before we go way, way back 
Oh, this is way back before Jesus was even crucified. He tells us this assurance. I've got history with you because I was praying for you before you even gave your life to me. So here's the great news. God has been praying for you, sir, for you, ma'am, for you, kid. All of a sudden, you can say, what? God has been praying for me? Yeah, it writes it. Who will believe? That's you and me. That's you and me. And this is what God says. I have never let you go. Somebody needs to hear this today. God says, I will never let you go. I never have and I never will. God says, I've never let you go. I've always known you. I've always loved you. And I've always wanted you. Therefore, I have never let you go. I never have. I never will. And I believe this is what God is telling us today since we've got history. He says, I I may need to rewrite your history. I may need to rewrite your history. See, the beauty of having a history with God is that God is the one who initiated the history with us. To the point that Jesus told the disciples one day, he said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Before the foundations of the world, I'm the one that has picked you. And and I believe in that, that there might need to be some rewriting of our history. In order to have a history, uh, there has to be a start somewhere. Lean in real quick. We're almost done. Your history with God didn't start when you said yes to Jesus and he became the savior of your life. Listen, that's not when it started, but that's what we think. Man, I got a history. Well, back in 1942, when I first got saved at, the, at the, the, the Baptist church down at the city. No, that's not when your history started. That's when God rewrote your history. That's when he rewrote your history. You, you, your history didn't start the moment you prayed the sinner's prayer and, and you repented of your sins and you gave your life to Jesus. That's not when your history with God started. Your history with God didn't even start when you cleaned up your act. I remember when I was 19 and I finally got serious about Jesus. My history didn't start then. My history started way back with God. God just cleaned my act up at that point and began rewriting my history. Your history with God didn't start when you joined the church. Boy, I became a member in in 2002. Praise God, but that's not when your history started. You might be saying, well, my history with God started when I first tithed. I remember getting my first 10%. That's not when your history started with God. Well, 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 my my history started when I sang that first hymn, Just As I Am, or that first worship song, Blessed Be the Name. That's not when your history started with God. That's when God began to rewrite your history. God initiated your history before he breathed life into Adam and Eve, before he told them to, to procreate, multiply, and subdue the earth. Though you weren't aware of the history you've had with God, through the resurrected work of Jesus, you can start a new history with Him today. This Easter Sunday, 2020, cooped up in your house in a quarantine, you can say today is the day on this resurrection Sunday that God began to rewrite my history, to rewrite my story. What is that you might say? A new history, living a new life in Jesus. Not your old life, nothing the way you've up to this point, but living a new life in Jesus. A new history, writing a new story. God wants to write a new story in and through your life, starting this season. A new history, singing a new song. The psalmist said, he's put a new song in my mouth. He's given me new lyrics, new words. A new history with a new purpose and a new direction and a new outcome. God says, I I might need to rewrite your history starting today. Why? Because we've got history. We've always had history, even while you don't personally know me. Now, let let me stop here. And that's some of us today. We might not personally know who God is through a relationship with Jesus. You might have heard of him and you might have fought tooth and nail to sit in front of this screen today. And you might say, man, 
I don't know much. I, I, I say that I'm this and I'm this and I'm an atheist and agnostic and don't know really what I want to believe. You see, God, I, I believe he's saying, I want to begin to rewrite your history. Even when you don't yet know me. You remember John 17, 20? He was praying for you. Yeah, he was praying for you. Who will believe? Who will believe? Man, that's history. That's deep. That's strong. He says this, even while you don't personally know me, I've always known you. I've numbered the hairs on your head. I know everything about you. Now that should not scare you. That is not a scare tactic. That is a present reality that Jesus knows everything about you and still wants you and still loves you, still would have died for you and he still would have risen from the dead just for you. Even when you were not the most loving or the most lovable, he says, I've always loved you. Even when you haven't wanted any part of me, God says, even when you thought I would cramp your style, even when you thought I would stick my nose in your business, even when you wished I would just leave you alone. God says, I've always wanted you. That's why I created you. That's why I had you on my mind when I was hanging on the cross. When, when I was in the tomb when I was buried for three days, I was thinking about you and I was thinking about you and I was thinking about you and I was thinking about your children and their children and I was thinking about your grandkids. I had you on my mind. Why? Because we would go, we go way back. I've had a history with you before you even thought we did. And since God has a history with you, he wants to resurrect a relationship between you two. You see, God so desires check in here God so desires to build on what he started with you because if you're still living and that's everybody that is watching this today if you're still living he still has plans for you he still has a mission for you he still has an assignment for you he still has purposes for you to accomplish he still has places for you to go people for you to see and he's got a message for you to tell and that message says this on Easter 2020 my life's history was rewritten from a God that is alive he resurrected from the dead and now I live a resurrected life in Jesus Christ come on somebody give Give him a praise offering today. You, you see, you cannot read about history if it's never happened. If it's just happening, it becomes a current event. It, it's not history. You see, everything we, we see in the newspapers, when the little boy used to say, read all about it, it had already happened. You see, you can read all about Jesus' resurrection, the Messiah, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Why? Because it's already happened. Listen to me right now. In other words, you can stop searching. You can stop looking. You can go to the tomb today and find that it is empty. The cross is empty. Because Jesus lives, he is still rewriting people's history today. His resurrection is proof of his history with us. He didn't just come to die for us. He came to finish what he started inside of us. His resurrection is the hope that God still knows you, that God still loves you, and that God still wants you. Listen, since you have a history with God, isn't it time that you and he rewrite your history starting today? Some of us might need to say, God, I, I need you to rewrite this. Starting on this Easter Sunday, 2020, I, I, need, to, I need the rest of my life to be written. I need it to be rewritten so, so, that, so that when people look back at my past from where I met you, that they can say, wow, God began to finish the work that he started inside of me. God is the author of your history. And there might be a chapter that he wants to add. A chapter about a resurrection in your life. Something that's come alive. Something that's been awakened inside of you. Maybe it's a chapter about a delivery from, from what something he's been birthed inside of you. 
Maybe it's a chapter about a once was, but a now is. I once was lost, but I'm now found. I once was blind, but I now can see. I once was far from God, but now I've got a relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. Maybe it's a chapter about a new passion and a new fire and a new awakening inside of you. There is resurrection power from the beginning, the middle, and will be to the end of your story and my story. Why? Because we've got history with God. We've got history with God. And because of that, it's a history with the resurrected Savior, Jesus. The same power that conquered death, hell, and the grave is the same power that can live inside of you at this very moment through Jesus. At this very moment, and let me ask you this question as we close. Do you know this resurrected Savior? I mean, we now know that we've all had a history with God. But do you personally, intimately know Jesus today? Well, what does that look like? You know, it's real simple. I mean, it's really simple. And I don't want to oversimplify it. And I sure don't want to overcomplicate it. But the Bible is, is true. And, and the Bible tells us that in order to, to start a new history with God, to start that relationship that we do some things. And those some things are confessing with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. That's you saying, Jesus, I make you Lord and master of my life. I, I want to follow you. I don't want to lead my life anymore. Jesus, I declare with my mouth that you are Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And I'm calling out to you. It says, for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We'll have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, I read this a while ago, but I believe this to be true. It says, because Jesus lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, I can also live with him. Do you know the resurrected Jesus? If you say, Jason, I don't. I'm going to be honest. I, I don't have a relationship with him, but I want one. On this Easter Sunday of 2020, I want a relationship. I, I want you to look at me right now. I don't care where you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how new you are to the faith. I, I don't care anything about your past. I care about your present and about your future. The most important decision that you can ever make in this life is to know Jesus as your Savior and Lord. This is the decision that will rewrite your history for the rest of your life and your everlasting life. And if you're looking at me right now and you say, Jason, I, I wanna know Jesus, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. And I want you to just look up to heaven with your eyes open and just pray something like this. Jesus, I need you today. I need to be saved. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross just for me. And you came for me. Cleanse me right now. I repent. I turn from my sin and I turn to you. By faith, I put my trust in you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Now help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at me real quick. If you prayed that prayer, Maybe that was the very first time you prayed that prayer or maybe it's the very first time you meant that prayer. Would you please let us know? Comment right now on whatever you're watching. Go to our website. Email me at jason at latitude.church. Email me. Tell me, Easter 2020, I gave my life to the resurrected king. I surrendered my life. Now I'm living a resurrected life. Because we want to pray for you. We want to follow up with you. You know, this happened the other night. Actually, about 4.30 in the morning the other morning, my wife received an email from somebody that said, I prayed to receive Jesus at 4.30 this morning. 
And guess what we did? We mailed her a Bible. We mailed her a Bible and we're praying for her and we're encouraging her. And we want to do the same for you. If you prayed that prayer, please let us know because this is the beginning of God rewriting your history. I love you guys. We love you. We miss you. We are praying for you. We're pulling for you. And I just want you to know that Latitude Church has your best interest at heart. Hey guys, happy Easter. Go enjoy your family today. God bless you guys. Have a great Sunday.
Thank you so much for joining us today. We don't take it for granted. We really hope that this message spoke to you in some way. And we wanna hear from you. And so if God spoke to your heart today, or if you made a decision to follow Jesus today, please let us know. You can email us at info at latitude.church or even comment on our live feeds. We have people that want to engage with you. And so we know that for all of us, we all have a next step. And we wanna put something into your hands that you can continue your next step with Jesus. And hey, don't forget next Sunday, our interactive service, Somebody Textify. God bless, have a great Sunday. Okay.